Hey, how are you doing? So today we'll continue with the cardiovascular system and today's topic is cardiac action potential. Let's get started. Okay, so we know that the resting membrane potential of the cardiac muscle fiber, it is about minus 85 to minus 90 millivolts, right? This is the cardiac muscle fiber and insides are negative compared to the outside. This is at rest. Therefore, this is known as resting membrane potential. Now, action potentials, as we already know, are changes in these membrane potentials, right? Transient changes. Okay. So cardiac action potentials differ from the normal action potential that we've seen in the large myelinated nerve fibers, right? In the large myelinated nerve fibers, the action potential curve was somewhat like this. But the cardiac action potential curve shows a characteristic plateau phase as you can see here. Okay, so cardiac action potential is divided into five phases. Phase zero, phase one, phase two, three and four, right? So this is how the action potential curve in a cardiac muscle looks like. Okay, now we'll go into detail into each of the following phases. Please come here. So phase zero. Phase zero is also known as the phase of rapid depolarization. Okay, the cardiac muscle is resting and cardiac muscle shows the resting membrane potential. Now phase zero means there is a rapid depolarization. There is a rapid depolarization. As you can see here, this part is called phase zero. This rapid upstroke, as you can see, is called phase zero. Okay, this is the phase zero of action potential. Now, the potential rises from, say, the resting membrane potential of minus 80 millivolt to a value of, say, about plus 30, plus 20 to plus 30 millivolts. Now, what is the ionic basis of this phase zero? Please look here carefully. Normally, insides at rest are negative and outsides are positive. But what happens here is that when the impulse comes from the SA node, remember, no external stimulus is required. Normally, in a beating heart, the impulse is generated by the SA node. So when the impulse comes from the SA node, it increases the sodium permeability and sodium starts moving in and the potential slowly rises from the value of minus 80 of resting moment potential towards the positive side. So initially there is sodium influx, opening of voltage gated sodium channels. But as soon as the potential reaches to say about minus 30 to minus 40 millivolts, I'll write it here. This level is say about minus 30 or minus 40 millivolts. At this level, the sodium channels are open and sodium is coming in. But at minus 30 level, the calcium channels open up. Which channels open up? Calcium channels open up and calcium starts moving in. All right, more positive charge flows in and the membrane potential drastically goes up towards the positive side to a value of about plus 20 to plus 30. So we say that sodium diffuses in in the initial phase and in the later phases, what comes in? Calcium and insides become up to plus 20 millivolts. So this is depolarization, the phase zero, which is the initial rapid depolarization phase. Okay, so that's the first phase that you see here in the cardiac action potential, right? Now, moving on to phase one. This is the phase one. As you can see, this small part here, this is the phase one. Now, what is this phase? This phase is known as initial rapid repolarization. All right, as we know from the action potential video, that action potential shows depolarization and repolarization. So this is initial rapid repolarization. Please come here. We have reached this value, say about plus 20 millivolts, right? Now there is initial rapid repolarization and the potential starts to drop rapidly, right? It starts to drop rapidly. It should be more steep. It should be like this. It drops rapidly and it falls, say, to a level of about minus 10 millivolts, right? It falls to a level of about minus 10 millivolts. And here, phase one ends right phase one ends at a level of about minus 10 millivolts what happens here 
is that insides are positive now for the membrane potential to decrease either the positives should move out or the negatives should come in now we know from action potential theory that positives move out so what moves out potassium potassium moves out so what happens as the membrane potential reaches of a value of plus 20 millivolts the potassium channel is open and potassium starts leaking out till a value of minus 10 millivolt has been reached now here what happens here starts phase 2 as you can see here this phase the plateau phase let me use a different color here so that you can understand properly this phase here this phase is known as the plateau phase or phase 2 of the cardiac action potential what happens here is that this this is how phase 2 looks like right it starts from a higher value starts from minus 10 millivolts and goes up to minus 30 to minus 40 millivolts right minus 30 to minus 40 millivolts this is known as a plateau phase as you can see here it is delayed and prolonged like a plateau now this is a characteristic feature of the cardiac action potential now why does this occur this occurs because see here potassium was moving out now there is plateau phase which means the efflux of positive ions or the movement of potassium from inside towards outside should reduce only then will be the positivity maintained or only then will be the rate of negativity reduced right so here what is happening is that negativity which was falling the rate of negativity was very high now suddenly it has stopped suddenly the resting membrane potential falls very slowly this is the plateau phase this happens because of two reasons number one that is opening of calcium channels that is opening of calcium channels so calcium starts diffusing in now these calcium channels that open are known as L type of calcium channels what type of calcium channels I'll write it here L type okay L type of calcium channels open so calcium starts moving in right the second cause is that there is closure of these potassium channels and these potassium channels are called inward rectifying potassium channels these are called I'll write it here as you can see inward rectifying inward rectifying potassium channels close so potassium efflux has been reduced and calcium influx has increased so the negativity inside the cell reduces right so this is the plateau phase and this is a very characteristic feature of cardiac muscle action potential okay so here at the level of about say minus 30 to minus 40 millivolts the plateau phase or the phase 2 ends now begins phase 3 which is the deep uh, repolarization i'm sorry it is repolarization we are in the phase of repolarization right now if you go to see technically repolarization consists of these three phases there is initial rapid repolarization plateau phase and there is a delayed repolarization okay so this is also repolarization this entire part technically is repolarization right because once the membrane potential reaches a spike after that what starts is repolarization this is depolarization the spike potential has been reached and repolarization has been started so repolarization here is divided into three phases phase one two three that is initial rapid plateau phase and delayed phase now what happens in delayed phase is that this was the plateau say now the membrane potential reduces okay now the membrane potential reduces right why does this happen obviously because of efflux of potassium potassium starts moving out but here the potassium channels are different here the potassium channels in the plateau phase were inward rectifying in the phase 3 or delayed repolarization the potassium channels are delayed outward rectifying potassium channels these are delayed because it is the delayed repolarization since potassium is moving out these are outward rectifying potassium channels okay so this is phase 3 where the membrane potential is going towards the negative towards the resting membrane potential right so this is repolarization phase 3 and the fourth phase or the final phase is when the resting membrane potential has been reached say a value of about minus 
80 millivolt has been reached now what happens here is that the resting membrane potential is restored inside there is negative and outside there is positive so we are back to where we start from where we started right so this comes back to the resting membrane potential now another important point here is that in phase 3 the calcium channels also close okay because here the calcium channels had opened in uh, in this phase in phase 3 the calcium channels will also close and the outward rectifying potassium channels will open okay so we've reached the resting membrane potential and this rmp or the resting membrane potential is maintained by the sodium potassium pump by the activity of sodium potassium pump right so these are the five phases of the cardiac action potential now this something that you should know about cardiac action potential that the total duration of the cardiac action potential from here to here it is say about 250 milliseconds right it is 250 milliseconds now it is said that phase zero or initial depolarization lasts for about two milliseconds phase two or the plateau phase it lasts for about 200 milliseconds right and phase 3 or the repolarization phase this lasts for about 50 milliseconds so we can say that the approx duration for which one cardiac action potential lasts is about 250 milliseconds now this is true only when the heart rate is in normal range say about 75 beats per minute because cardiac action potential rate determines the heart rate right like i have said before this electrical activity will give rise to the mechanical activity of contraction and the rate at which this electrical activity will occur at that rate only the mechanical contraction of the heart will occur so at rest as we all know heart contracts heart beat or heart rate is normal at rest because but once we start exercising our heart rate increases so the frequency of cardiac action potential must also increase right because if heart rate is increasing the impulses coming should also increase which means the duration of cardiac action potential should decrease right as you all know time is inverse to frequency if frequency is increasing the time will decrease so it is said that at a heart rate of say about uh, let me write it here 200 beats per minute the duration reduces from 1 250 milliseconds to about 150 milliseconds so duration of one cardiac action potential will reduce to 150 milliseconds if the heart rate is increased to 200 beats per minute okay so these are certain important points that you should know and here i have represented the various ionic changes that occur in different phases as you can see here in phase zero there is influx of sodium that is rapid depolarization at phase one there is efflux of potassium rapid so there is initial rapid repolarization in phase two you can see that potassium has stopped moving out all right so the potassium efflux has reached a plateau all right it has not reduced it it has stopped moving out this means that the rate of potassium which at which it is moving out has come to a plateau level okay it has reduced to such an extent that it hardly affects the voltage here. as you can see in the plateau phase the voltage drops to minus 10 to minus 30 so you can imagine that the rate of potassium efflux has reduced to such a level that is negligible okay so that's what i mean when i say that the potassium efflux has stopped okay so potassium has reached a plateau and calcium has started moving in as you can see here like i said the l type of calcium channel is open and calcium starts moving in and this corresponds with the plateau phase right and at towards the end of the plateau phase the calcium channels close and the outward rectifying potassium channels open and potassium efflux starts and when the resting membrane potential is reached everything is back to normal okay so this is all about the cardiac action potential so let me just summarize it for you once again we started with the fact that cardiac action potential has five phases phase 0 1 2 3 and 4 we've seen in detail all the five phases we've seen the ionic basis of the five phases and we've seen the time duration of the entire cardiac action potential and what will happen if there is an increased heart rate the cardiac action potential duration will decrease so that's it guys for cardiac action potential i hope you understood and i hope you like this lecture now you can go back to your books and read it it will be really simple for you and i'll see you in the next one with another interesting topic